Okay, so in this problem, you have intersecting circles. And you're looking for the common chord. And you want to find the length of that common chord. So what do you know about these circles? Paul. Oh, the radius is 10. On the first cir circle, the radius is 10. And what else? The origins are at 0, 0. The origins at 0, 0. And Connor. On the second circle, it, it is centered at 21, 0. Right. right. And it has a radius of 17 because, How? because the square root of 289 is 17. That is very insightful, Connor. Thank you, Mr. So if you look at that, you're right. Let's go ahead and draw a picture of this and bring it in. So I went ahead and drew a picture in GeoGebra of our circles. And what's one thing you notice about them in general, Connor? The one on the right is substantially larger. That is true. We have one larger and one smaller. What else do you notice, Paul? They intersect. They do intersect, and we're looking for that common intersection right here. Our goal is to find the length of this chord. Now, in GeoGebra, we could actually just find those points of intersection. But we can't really tell exactly what those points are. We could guess and check for those points, and maybe that's the best way to do this. But I want to find, for instance, well, let me start drawing a picture here. I have this centered here. I know that this length is how far? 17. Which also is going to be the same up here. What's that length? 10. Okay, so what do you want to do here? So what Alex is saying here is that this length right here, that's 21. I agree with that. So you're right. We have the whole distance here as 21. But unless we have one of these short lengths, it's harder to figure out what the right angle is going to look like here. So any other ideas for, for solving this? I see where you're going with this. So... So what you're saying, Joe, is that you are finding this intersection right here. And, and how did you figure that out? Did you just guess and check? Uh, no. I knew that that was uh, 10. That was 17 and 21. I knew those lengths. So then I subtracted to get 7. So you think that this length right here is 7? Yeah. I'll put a question mark by that. I'm still trying to figure out why that's 7, though. And I slightly disagree that it's 7. Yeah, it didn't look great, but I just kind of thought it was 7. Couldn't he, like, guess it, though? Like, the driving theorem. Okay, so let's see. Let's see. <laughs> Joe, we'll, we'll, we'll go with this. So if I guess, guess that that's 7, right? I should be able to find what this length right here is. That would be, let's see, um, that would be 10 squared minus 7 squared, square root that, right? You okay with that? So that would be 140, so that would be square root 51. Now the problem here is that would mean now that this point A, that point A would be at 7 comma square root 51, right? Well, if I substitute that in here, ooh, it actually does it work. So 7 square root 51, that works there. Does it work here? Because we, we need to know where they intersect. So if we take 7 minus 21, and then square that, you get 196. Uh-oh. 196 plus 51 is not 289. So that's a problem. You see, at least you see where, where that problem lies here. So we'll go ahead and pause this and we'll go back. We're going to go ahead and continue right now with this method of guessing and checking. What do you think, where do you think this line does cross the x-axis? Yes, Alexa. Six. So Alexa says six. Now, if I think this crosses here at six, what would this height be then? 
What'd you say? Eight. That would be a six, eight, ten right triangle. Now we can just double check that this point here is six, eight. If I substitute a six in here, I get 36. Eight here, I get 64. That checks. And if I substitute a six in for x here and an eight in for y here, that would be 15 squared, which is 225 plus 64. Does that equal 289? Yep. Yeah. That checks. So yeah, I think that works. And now we can actually go ahead and answer our question because that, that height there is 8. So what's the whole chord going to be? 16. 16. Okay, now I could just leave it at that. Hey, we guessed and checked. We're okay. But I'm sure when a test comes, you're not going to want to go, hey, let's guess and check and hope we get it right. So let me give you another idea here. Let's say, and we did this other day, actually, let me shrink this first. Wouldn't it be easier to not guess and check? I would agree. It's easier not to guess and check. <coughs> so the other day we worked on a problem where I took two circles on GeoGebra and we were looking at where they intersected. Do you remember what we did to those equations of the circles to get the equation? We subtracted them. So what we did the other day is we actually subtracted the equation of two circles and we found that when we subtract the equation of two circles, we actually get the equation of the chord. So if I take these two equations, let's just start here. And I'm just subtracting. It doesn't really matter which one you subtract from each other. I'm just using this one because the numbers are bigger. So I'll get some nice positive numbers. And I'm going to subtract here the first equation from it. Let's see what happens. Well, a 289 minus 100, that's 189. That's kind of nice. And then the y squared minus y squared, that's going to just cancel to 0. So there's nothing that's going to be there. Now, that top one is kind of tricky. So I'm going to go ahead and onto the side here do this. When I take x minus 21 quantity squared, what do I get? x squared. minus 42x plus you know, kind of a big number. Uh, let's see, that would be 441. So when I subtract this minus x squared, all I'm going to go get right here is I'm going to get negative 42x plus 441. Now that's the equation. This right here is the equation of that chord. And what's nice is I don't even have any y value, so I can kind of simplify this. I would get negative 42x. Oh, got to subtract my 441 from both sides. And let's see what I get. Negative 252. Divide that. And x equals... 6. Now what's interesting about that is even though that's given us our x points, that's actually the equation of the chord. So that tells me that the chord is a vertical line through 6 on the x-axis. And then if I go back to my first picture here, right there, that means that this has the equation of x equals 6. I can figure out what these points are now, and we can kind of work from there. So it's less guessing and checking. We can just plug them in. And is this going on the website? It is, Connor. OK, any questions about that? Kayla? Um, so right there, what happened? So you know how it's x squared minus 42x plus what? Yes. Mm -hmm. what, why isn't the x squared there when you go to solve it? Wait, what happened that? Because right here, I subtracted the, I subtracted the x squared from that oh, equation. Okay. So I, when I subtracted it, those just canceled out, and I just end up with that. Thanks. Okay, any other questions? No.